So I mentioned how we don't use tables anymore for layout as much as we use divs. Uh, and so far, we haven't really seen an example of how a div really replaces a table. Um, technically, if we look at this last example, we've created two rows. Um, but that's not really hard to do. We can do that with basic HTML anyways, with items stacked on top of each other. So one way to illustrate this is to take a look at how the element is displayed. And I had mentioned that the divs do actually have a property, and that is setting it to a block level element, which is done with the display property. So when getting into this, this comes in. So now I'm going to introduce a property that can be really, really frustrating when you're first getting to know how to use it. So in order to do this, we're going to take a look at another property that we can add within HTML. And that is called the class property. So on line 29 here, within the opening div tag, we're going to add class equals and two double quotes. And we're going to go ahead and add this to the div on 42 as well. Now, unlike most properties, class does not have any real predefined values. The value we're going to give class, we're going to make up ourselves. And what a class allows us to do, at least within CSS, is um, really further pinpoint what our rule is directed at. And so far, we've manipulated all the div tags on the page, in this case, two of them. But say we want to manipulate the two of them independently. We need a way to kind of name them or specify which one is which. So for the class, let's go ahead and just be generic and we'll call this column dash one. And for the class on line 42, you guessed it, column dash two. So now both of these tags have a, their own unique identifier. A class is not the only way to give a tag a unique identifier, but it's, but it's what we're going to use for this example. Now the CSS we already have in place here is fine. We don't have to change that because I want to continue to use these properties on both divs. However, I want to create rules for each one of these independently. So our selector has to change. To write a selector for a class, we start out by using the dot or period followed by the class name. So column dash one, and then curly brackets. And we'll create another one for column two, column dash two. So just like with the div selector on line 11 here, the selector on line 20 is going to scan through the body of the document and find any tag on the page that has a class equal to column one. Likewise, down here, this is going to find everything that has a class equal to column two. So just to kind of give a quick example of that, let's go ahead and add some properties in here. And we're going to introduce the font dash size property. And we're going to go ahead and change the font size for everything within column one to 16 pixels. And that's represented by PX. And we'll end that with a semicolon. And for everything in column two, let's go ahead and do font size is 20 pixels. So we'll go ahead and save this and take a quick look at it. And it should illustrate what's going on here with these classes. So save. And let's change our example. And there you go. So now you can see that the text size is different between the two. So that should give you a quick idea of what classes do uh, in regards to CSS. And now that we know that, we can go ahead and look at what properties we need to kind of mimic a table. So we can go ahead and save as example 10. 